there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. You've probably had a look at the title, you probably have kind of decided what you think that this is actually going to be about. Well, I suppose let's, let's tackle the title, shall we? I'm kind of ste stepping back from politics just a little bit. I've kind of decided in my own head to my own self that arguing and butting heads with people that keep on generalizing everything and by the way this is on all sides this is not just the left that i think are over generalizing anything and making everything all about all of the right wing the right are just as bad in fact i would actually say in this occasion for this instance the right are worse where if it comes to a point of a terrorist organization let's say antifa for instance obviously everything that's been going on at this moment in time with a uh, certain asian reporter shall we say that has now gone the whole of the left of this the whole of the left want that the whole of the left want this people using it as a way of going against trans rights and gay rights and things like that now fine there are issues that can be discussed and should be discussed but if you're talking about a Pacific terrorist incident where people are literally being beaten up because of perceived political biases or perceived political reportings, then surely that should be the premise of what you're talking about. Not trying to point score by using this as an advantage to push an agenda that isn't even equatable to what the hell you're talking about. But yet somehow... Somehow the left are bad, and somehow the whole of the right are bad. There's no good people in the middle anymore. There's no good people at all, apparently. The left are this, and the right are that. And that's it. We're assigned to our own preconceptions of what these people are supposed to mean now. I kind of don't want to be in that aspect. I don't want to be part of that idea. I, I'd much rather talk to the individuals and actually give their ideas credence to be able to understand where they're coming from. Rather than just going, oh, you're left. Well, guess what? I don't want to talk to you because I think your ideas are stupid. Or sorry, oh, you're right wing. Sorry, I don't want to talk to you simply because you're a Nazi or a racist. Sorry, I keep looking behind me because my cat decided to, that she's going to fucking sit directly behind me because she's an idiot. And realises that if I go backwards, then I'm going to sit on her. But hey, I'm sure she'll be fine with that. But there's a good way of snapping me out of my little rant, to be fair. Which was, yeah, I'm going to be stepping back from politics. I'm going to step away for a little bit. I'm going to focus more on social commentary. I am going to focus on the left. I am going to focus on the right. And everything else that's in between and religiosities as well. I find it more interesting to talk about the ideas and the beliefs more than I do about the people and to make it a personalization or a personal attack on those people or group attack of group identities. I don't see people as a monolith, especially if they're all on the left and all the leftists want this and all leftists want that or all the people on the right want this and all the people on the right want that. I don't want to go down that road of trying to ascribe quick schemas to people because I'm too lazy to ask them what their actual opinions are and too lazy and dishonest, in my opinion, to actually go, OK, well, you have a problem with immigration. Why do you have a problem with immigration? And not naturally assuming that because you have a problem with immigration that you're racist. The same as obviously me. I have a problem with immigration. I know I'm not racist. But yet some people will think that. And it goes to the same for the left. That they want open borders because they believe that people are able to walk through and not have anything to worry about. That people are no longer illegal and stuff like that. I like the whole premise of those ideas. I actually do like the premise of them. But when you put them into actual practice rather than actually separating the ideas and concept from what we have as a nation and what we have as the world, it kind of falls flat. The same as most ideas when you separate them from the rest of the world and take into consideration humanities. Uh, let's just say humanity. But overall, that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm sick and tired of identity politics playing through. And I know a lot of people that I follow on YouTube. I know a lot of them that 
are still falling for identity politics while still trying to ascribe themselves as not falling for identity politics. I'm a libertarian, I'm a, I'm this and I'm that. But yet, you still classify all people as this or all people as that that are on a political persuasion. I don't... I don't understand the trying to force labels onto people that, okay, maybe I like some socialist programs or social programs. That doesn't make me a socialist. The same as I like capitalistic values and having a free market economy. That doesn't make me an all out capitalist or an anarcho capitalist. Just because I like specific aspects of specific ideas doesn't mean I ascribe to the whole of the ideas and concepts of the theory behind it. I'm human. I pick and choose what I think sounds good to me. And everybody is different. And I think that we should actually take more credence and actually try to listen to what people are actually trying to express to us. Rather than just naturally assuming that we can read people's minds and try and finish off people's sentences... I just don't want to ascribe to that level of thinking and then still classify myself as a critical thinker or somebody that likes to try and be non-biased in my approach. I don't understand that level of hypocrisy. To me, I just don't. I just don't get it. I just don't understand why so many people go, well, you know, I don't really want to ascribe the left as this, but, you know... All the left support this. And all the left support that. No. You mean a specific group that you have a demonology of. Or should I say. I, I don't even know really what how to describe it. It's like the boogeyman. That you have a specific feeling. Of the way that these minority groups. In specific political aspects. React and act. And you ascribe all of that small minority. As the whole of the group. I just don't understand the demonization of it. I just I just don't get it. Especially for when people are trying to say, well, I don't like making prejudgments. I don't like doing this. I don't like doing that. But yeah, at the same time, there you go making the prejudgments about all the left do this. Or all the left don't want wars. Or all the left won't defend themselves. Or all the right are just warmongers and war hawks. I don't understand the generalisation. It's just a form of dismissiveness. Dismissiveness of the ideas that have been put forward. To just go, oh, well, you think this, so I disagree with it. I was, watch I was watching the Britisher on Twitter, to be fair. Some of his tweets. And he was having a conversation with somebody on the left. And he pointed something out to that person. And instead of the person actually coming back with a clarification of why that person thought that way... That person took some time, went through the British's tweets and found somebody that was probably questionable to follow him. Maybe somebody with a preconceived racist view of having the the South flag, the American South flag, as in uh, the old Confederacy flag, uh, flying in the background and, and whatnot. And because they found that person, it probably took them at least 15 to 20 minutes to go through the British's you know, followers, so to speak. To post that, to say, I'm not going to talk to you because of you having this supporter. I don't understand that level of stupidity. I can't think of any other word. Because it is. Just because it's somebody that you completely and utterly disagree with supports an idea or ideas that you may have, that you may have somebody that follows you because of it, doesn't mean that you subscribe to all of their ideas. And it doesn't mean that they subscribe to all of your ideas either. It just means that they like what you're trying to say. I think that if I was to say this, and to say that Hitler was one of the first people, or countries rather, at that point in time, to try and implement a national stop smoking policy. Now, to be fair, knowing Hitler, he probably decided that if you were going to smoke, then he was probably going to shoot you and put you somewhere. But all joking aside, I think we can all say that the idea of making smokers aware of the actual problems that do come from smoking is probably a good idea. And to help a service nationally, 
that is there to help people that want to quit, quit. It's probably a good idea. But just because Hitler said it, are we going to completely and utterly obfuscate it and get rid of it? No, not really. Because the idea is a good idea. That doesn't mean that I like everything that fucking Hitler said, ever. Because most of the stuff he said is fucking ridiculously stupid and horrendously bigoted and, you know, condemned completely. Obviously. But yeah, because I've now made a comparison, I now actually have to throw that caveat in because otherwise I support Hitler, apparently. Fuck's sake. But that's that's the level that I'm trying to say now. If you say personalities or a person that has ascribed to an idea or pushed an idea and you use that as a form of reference to be able to say, well, this idea is this and blah, 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 then apparently you're supporting the person completely and utterly that states the idea. Not the fact that they've said the idea, but you support the idea. I... It's just something that I really don't understand with politics at the minute. I really don't. More people are more interested and aligned to who they like and who they support as a popularity contest than the actual policies now. They just don't seem to really go for any of the policies. Now, I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm not telling you what to do and where to go and who to fuck or whatever. But if your political identity is a case of picking people that you like the look of and the way that you think they sound and you don't study the policies that they're actually trying to implement. I don't want to say you shouldn't vote because, you know, you do what you want. But at the same time, is it an informed vote that you're actually doing? Are you actually standing up on the principle or are you just pushing a narrative because your friends say it's cool? Or because you like the person rather than the actual policy. Because the person can say, well, I support LGBTQI propaganda. And then go completely against it. Just because somebody says it doesn't mean that their policies are going to support it. And I think that most people don't look at the policies anymore. They generally look at the person and go, yeah, I like the person. I like the way that he looks. I like the cut of his jib, so to speak. Or her jib, whatever. And that really worries me. That really worries me for the future. I know I've reiterated, and I know it sounds like a rant. And I know it sounds like a ramble. It is unscripted. Most of my videos are normally unscripted. Well, actually, I'd say 99.8% of my videos are unscripted. I don't believe in the script. I like to just go off and just see what happens. Uh, just let my natural instinct lead me, so to speak. Hence why I try to put myself as the common sense guy rather than trying to say that I'm an intellectual. Because I'm not an intellectual. I'm just some bloke on the internet wearing a fucking train driver's cap at this minute in time. I just really want people to drop the generalizations. The demonizations of people. And that's the reason why I'm stepping away from politics. I can't be asked with it. I can't be asked trying to defend every point that I make or somebody else has to make or go against every point that somebody's made based on their characteristics or based on the character or based on what I perceive their motives to be rather than just letting them speak their mind and actually understanding the process in which has driven them to that conclusion and then being able to maybe change their minds to come to the conclusion that I've had, or maybe that I've got, or maybe listening to their thought process and realising that my thought process is not complete. And the evidence that I've used to be able to come to my thought process is incomplete and not correct. But if I already have internal biases towards that, to say that anybody else that says this is wrong, then I'm never going to be able to change my mind from that side. I'm always going to have a, a pathological disagreement with them and a disconnect because I will discard anything that they say because of the side in which that they are speaking from, so to speak, or the inherent side that I think that they're speaking from, rather than giving them the opportunity and, most importantly, should we say, the actual dignity to be able to speak and the clarity for me to think, no, they understand what they're saying. To give them credence, understanding, empathy, 
to understand where they're trying to come from, what life that they've led and so on and so forth, what's driven them to think the way that they think, rather than just going, ah, all leftists, they just live at home with their mothers. Fine, maybe they do. Does that mean that their political strategies are necessarily wrong just because they live at home with their parents? Really? I don't see how that makes any difference on the political strategies that they may have. Now, economic strategies, maybe. Political strategies, not so much. Their belief system strives them to in be the way that they are regardless of where they live. I just don't see how... The idea itself needs to have the background of the character of the person to be able to be debated or to be challenged. Anyway, that's that's me on politics. I'm pulling away from that because of those reasons. I'm not going to go into that. What I'm going to be going into a little bit more is more into the idea of world building. More into the idea, for my live streams anyway, I'm going to try and do at least once once a week Maybe, depending on if I can get more people on, once a month. Because it does really depend on who wants to speak. Because not a lot of people want their worldviews challenged, regardless of whether they're right-wing, left-wing, conservative, whether they are Christian, Muslim, Hinduism, or, or whatever. Nobody really wants their belief system and their belief world-building challenged too much. And uh, for SJ that come on before... Though I do disagree with her on quite a lot politically, which is fine, there's no point in denying that or saying that that holds us against each other or whatever, but I really do appreciate her coming on and being able to give me an idea into the reasons behind her thought processes. I think the realisations of people that are different thinkers to us or perceptions to us, to realise that they are human and realise that they have come to their thought processes not simply due to indoctrination, so to speak, but due to their life experiences, due to their life's understandings and situational hazards that have happened or perceptions that have occurred to them. I think that's much more important than trying to dog on somebody's character because you have a preconception of what that person's character may or may not be because you have a preconception of what drives people to an ideology rather than listening to how they come to that ideology. Again, going off into politics. But for the videos, and there are going to be quite a few videos again because as you can see by the length of this video, I now have some spare time free. I have around about six to seven weeks free to be able to start putting some videos out again. So my videos are going to be more of the same as what they used to be where I'm going to take more of a social political role rather than delving straight into the political side of aspects. So expect <laughs> more situations like vampire facials to be coming up and social oddities that I think are a little bit interesting. Um, I believe that my video for tomorrow is going to be about a section in Leeds that has, for the last five years, as far as I'm aware from memory at this minute, has turned into a legalised red light zone or red light district for the first time in UK history for a very, very long time. And how people are still bitching and moaning even though the girls themselves are saying it's safer for them to be able to do this, and so on and so forth, and how feminists themselves seem to be umming and ahhing about whether it's a good idea to be a sex worker, or whether or not it's a bad idea for men to be able to pay women for sex. I find that very, very contradictory. Because in one minute you have the aspects of, I'll save it for the video. I'll save it for the video. But that's what I just wanted to let everybody know. That I'm moving away from the political side of things. Or at least the political analysis that I used to do to such a degree. I don't think that I'll be going into that depth of uh, political analysis again for, for a while. Should I say? For a while. But at the same time... 
I am still going to be doing videos. I am still going to be doing content. And I'm sure at some point in time I will touch on politics because unfortunately politics has one of those ways of worming its way into almost any discussion that you have. So I'm not going to go, oh, politics, not tackling it. I just don't want to go to the in-depth political analysis that I used to try to do. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this rambling excuse of a video, or this ranting excuse of a video. But, I bid you farewell. I bid you adieu. And I'll see you all again, real soon. Bye-bye for now. Take care.